Hi, I'm Robbie from RBC, and today I'm going to be giving this RockShock 2.1 charger damper some love. So uh, we often get these in. Um, uh, in this case, the gentleman who owns this has serviced his fork fairly regularly, uh, lower leg service, so he's put a lot of oil in the lower legs, but he's, never, he's neglected to service the actual damper, and you can see that the oil from the low legs has been ingested into the damper. It's expanded the bladder. As you can see, this is at rest. This is what the bladder should look like. You can see the difference between the two. If I compress the damper, uh, you'll see how the bladder expands. So what happens is this bladder actually gets so big that it actually can't um, expand any further because the stanchion walls prevent it from doing so. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this. We're going to do a service. We're going to replace the spring. Um, and I'll show you how to do it. So, firstly, I'm going to take my little um, star ratchet here and I'm going to open that. You can see some oil was just going to pop out because it's under pressure. There it is. You see the color of the oil as well. This generally means that it's been mixing with low leg fluid. Um, so, there we go. Let's take that out. That's it. And we can just bleed out the excess. There we go. By the way, our oil is all environmentally uh, um, taken care of, so we do have it disposed of responsibly. If you look at the, at the bladder now, you can see that's the shape it should be when it's fully extended. So when the, when the shock or when the damper cartridge is fully extended, the bladder should look like that. So compared to previous where it was so expanded, uh, you will see that what the difference is. So uh, this is going to be where we're going to start. I'm going to clamp it into the vise now quickly and I'm going to take it apart. So I've got my soft jaws here and I'm going to clamp it in there and take my 26. Let's see what this is here. It is a 26. Yep, there we go. And I'm going to open the top. As you can see, that the, the bladder will twist because it is connected. So Sometimes it doesn't work 100%, so I'm going to open up from the bottom. This is a 25, or if you just use a shifting spanner, you'll get it. Uh, just undo that while you hold the damper bladder. Just want to take this off the U cartridge, or the U cup, should I say. There we go. Okay, so the U cup is now free. And now we can open the top. Okay, there we've got our top cap off. Now we've got our uh, charger dampers um, actuator. So we can open this and see. So just a quick uh, um, heads up on this. There is no seals in here and there's no seals around here. So what tends to happen is if you're racing or if you're riding in muddy conditions or even if you jet wash your bike, you will tend to see that the oil does, I mean the water does collect in here. And that causes some problems with the, the spring. There we go. So as you can see, if you look at how the, the water has, been, has come into the spring area, um, it's gone over the skirt seal as well. So it's most probably also contaminated the charger damper. Um, if you look inside here, you'll get a good idea of where the mud is and all the rust. So we're going to clean that up. We're going to clean this out, we're going to replace the spring, and we're going to put a new skirt seal on there. Okay, so to go forward now, we're going to just take this apart. There we are. Just don't lose these little pins because they are key to the fork working correctly. The damper. I'm going to take this old spring off and throw that away. I'm going to take off the skirt seal. I'm also going to throw that away because it's definitely been damaged by um, the mud 
that's gone through there. And I'm going to give this a good clean. And spray it with some isopropyl alcohol just to make sure it's nice and clean. And there's no uh, residual rust. Okay, so unfortunately there's no way you can avoid this. I think the best thing I could say is just try and uh, not obviously uh, use a jet sprayer on this area, but if you're riding in the mud, um, it is it will get in. Um, so just make sure that you have the damper serviced um, fairly regularly. All right, so what I'm going to do, because there's so much mud in here, I'm actually going to strip the whole thing because I don't want that mud to fall into the damper when I, when I do the service of it. So I'm going to open that, take the bladder off, should just slide off, there we go, um, and now you can see the workings of it inside, uh, there's a key um, part that you should always check for, um, there's a little o-ring down here, if that's not in place you're never going to get your lock out, if you can see there, there is the o-ring there. So that o-ring always should be in place. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually disassemble this and I'm going to clean this out separately because I don't want any of this grease or the rust or dirt falling inside my damper. So to do that I'm going to use this um, space that's provided here. I'm going to open it, there we go, gently, you don't want to damage anything when you do that. Okay, and off it comes, and that will reveal my shim stack. There's my shim stack over there, my compression uh, shim stack. There's also a rebound shim stack um, underneath, which we will look at just now. But there's the the workings of it. Your uh, uh, all the parts, your lockout, and your cartridge, everything is there. So we're just going to give this a good clean out. Some isopropyl alcohol in there. Yeah, I just want to make sure there's no scoring or damage on the inside here. Um, there is a coating that this has, so I see that spring has scored this, but it's not too serious. So when we put the new spring back in, it's going to function fairly well. Um, there we go. And so now we can just spray it in with the air just to make sure there's no leftover dirt or dust inside or grease or anything like that. There we go. All right. So just wash, wipe the top off here. Just want to make sure that's all good. No broken shims inside. Um, check that everything's still in place. Yep, that's all good. All right. So now we can reassemble this. There we go. And we can tighten this straight back onto there. And just, there we go. That's it, nice and tight. Because the bladder wasn't broken, uh, we're actually not going to replace it. We're just going to give it a clean, put it back on again. I'm going to replace the spring and the skirt seal, as I said, but we'll cover that now. So what I like to use with this is a bit of a uh, no-stick slip. It's just going to, uh, I'm going to use it extensively just now in the, when I assemble the and uh, bleed the cartridge. But for now, it's just going to help me get the bladder over this section. With ease, I don't want any um, hooking up. There we go. And you can see there's a little space here, and that U cup is going to actually hook into that. So that's all I'm going to do for this stage, for this point. Now I'm going to focus on the actual um, unit itself. 
Um, this is the high speed and your low speed setup. You can see how it works there. You can turn the high speed and it moves this parabolic needle in and out. Um, and then when the lockout is actually runs on these uh, grooves. So when you, uh, when you, um, when you actually uh, use the lockout, it actually pushes this into the shock and it reaches that uh, o-ring i was telling you about and effectively stops the oil from flowing directly through and forces it to go through the shim stack so that's essentially how that works so um, firstly what i'm going to do is i'm going to replace the skirt seal for that i'm going to lube this up with a bit of the a slick kick uh, really good grease to use there's your skirt seal brand new skirt seal uh, i'm going to very gently Put it on here because I don't want to tear it. There we go, right like that. Perfect, 100%. So the skirt is uh, facing the opening of the skirt is facing the oil. So when it when it, the cartridge compresses, the skirt is actually forced against the side of the cartridge and it holds the oil in place. There we go. So now I can move to my spring. For that, I'm going to use a little bit of this grease. This is just the RSP smooth uh, or soft grease. Um, it's just to coat this. This is a stainless steel spring. Um, so there's some locators inside here. If you look closely inside the damper, you'll see there's a locator hole. And that's to take this little pin that goes in there. But first what I like to do is just stretch this a little bit like that. Just so that when I activate it, when I turn it in, I've actually got to set it into these grooves here. So by stretching it out a little bit, I can actually allow it to move before it activates. Um, there we go. Now it's in its hole. And I'm going to move to this point now. I'm going to use some more of the RSP grease. I just want to put them in these little uh, holes where the pins go. And that's just going to hold the pins in place uh, while I set up the, the shock or set up the cartridge. There we go. Okay, these little brass pins are prone to being lost. So just be careful when you're using this that you don't um, drop them out. All right, so now we're ready to go back in. Um, we've, uh, we've essentially got the, uh, everything put together. We've got the new skirt seal. We've got the new spring. I'm just going to make sure this is nicely lubricated inside. Um, we can actually locate this in the hole. Okay, so there's another hole locator or pin locator over here. So when we put this in, when we put the assembly in, we actually want to make sure that that locates into that hole just like that. Okay, now's the hard part because now we need to uh, turn this and make sure that this can wind the spring up and still uh, not activate itself. Which is why I actually increase this, this why I pull the spring apart. Uh, okay, how are we doing there? There we go. So now I'm getting the full range of activation. So I know my, uh, my lockout's working. And now I can put it back together again. So I'm going to take a little bit of this slick kick again. I just want to grease inside this part because this is going to be against the bladder and I want to make sure that the rubber bladder moves over this part um, easily um, so it's very secure when it puts on because it is going to become uh, under high pressure once the bladder, the uh, damper starts to work. All right, so there we go. Now we can assemble it again. And I just hold the, uh, the bladder down with my hand because I want it to get started nice and properly on here. Here we go. All right, so um, I want to talk us about newton meters. Um, it should be fairly tight. There we go. And so now I can see it's actually all the way in. Now it's got, I've got to make sure that this is the bladder is sitting in the U, U cup over there. 
Again, I'm going to put a little bit of grease around the side here because I need to tie this up. And there we go. Let's just start the thread there. All right, so starting it quite nice and easy. Take my 25. Okay. If it, if it starts to bunch up, just turn it backwards and, and regain the position. You don't want it to wind up the, the, the bladder at all. Okay, so as, uh, as we tighten, if we over tighten this, it's actually going to cut the bladder. So what we're looking for, if you look at this, um, at this part over here, these, this part and, and this camber here must be equal. So I've just got to turn it up a little bit more. Um, basically, all you wanted to do is hold the, the damp, uh, the bladder in the U cup spot, just like that. That's perfect. So it's not, it's not going to cut the U cup off at the bottom. So there we go. All right. So that was pretty easy. We just check that the spring is returning nicely. Um, I'll just take this one over here. Okay, you can see the spring is working perfectly, so the lockout is returning properly. All right, so now I'm going to bleed it. Okay, here we go. I like to bleed it like this um, with the damper on the low end. Obviously, I want the air bubbles to come all the way to the top. Um, and I'm going to bleed it by hand. You can use a, a bleeding machine, uh, although I prefer to do this by hand because it's quite quick. Um, so what I'm going to start out with is, we discussed this before, no stick slip. I'm going to open this. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my, my bleeding syringe. And I'm going to put some of this in there. Okay, so we put in about 3 to 5% of our no stick slip which is an additive to mix with the oil, which will ensure uh, a, lot, a, friction, a lot less friction within the system. I'm going to take some five weight oil. I use uh, silkaline from Fuchs, which is really good mixture. I find it quite stable. Um, and I'm going to apply it to here like this. I'm just going to start by filling up the syringe. And then when I activate when I pull the damper, you can see it's going to start drawing the fluid in. And the air bubbles, I'm going to start purging the air bubbles. And because I've got the cartridge at an angle, it's actually going to allow the, the air to rise to the top. Just pump it a little bit. There we go. Okay. Put some more fluid in there. Okay. Oopsie. Here we go. Now that I've filled most of it with oil, I'm actually going to do a sealed container full. So I'm going to take the syringe. So now I can actually use the syringe to uh, compress and vacuum the, the, the oil out as well, or the bubble, should I say. I can compress it and vacuum any air out. So if you can look there now, I'm actually drawing the air bubbles out uh, while I'm bleeding the, the cartridge as well. And I'll draw the bubbles out again. There we go. So this is the most effective way of bleeding this. 
Um, you don't want any air bubbles in here because it will definitely affect how the how the fork works and also how the or how the cartridge works and how the how efficient the lockout is. So basically, any air that's left in here is going to mix with the oil and turn this whole thing into a big milkshake inside here, which is going to provide no damping at all. So we need to make sure that there's no air bubbles in here, air whatsoever. Okay, so we're getting there slowly but surely. We're getting our air bubbles out. Just putting a bit of a vacuum on here now, and that's going to pull quite a few of them out. You can see it's pulling the bladder, um, compressing the bladder. Okay, and there we go. Got to get those little bubbles out. Okay, there we go, no more bubbles. Just to make sure, I'm putting this under vacuum again. And that's it, all the bubbles are gone. So now I'm just gonna fill it up again. And I'm just gonna let it naturally, the, the rubber bladder must naturally uh, push the syringe up just to make sure that it's at rest, fully extended. And now we can just close it up. There we go. About a five newton meter torque setting on that so now we can check okay remember when we first started how how far out the bladder would expand now it's much better so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to just work it a couple of times and then i'm just going to open this again just to make sure that there is no air bubbles left in here because as i said if there's any air bubbles in here it's not going to work properly Okay, there we go. Messy job. Lots of oil floating around the place. I normally wear gloves, but uh, over the pandemic, uh, we have had quite a severe shortage of gloves. So, unfortunately, uh, we got to do this barehanded. But I would certainly recommend using uh, uh, nitrile gloves. Especially if you're working with old oil, it can be quite toxic. Um, anyway, there we go. So I'm 100% convinced that there's no uh, resi residual air left in here. So now I can close it up again. There we go. And check it. There we are, 100%. And now we can do the damper check. I'm going to clamp it here. Here we go. And I'm going to activate the lockout. Just make sure that I've got it. There's a very firm lockout there. And everything else is working. Lockout is firm. That's how you do a charger damper. As you can see, it's working nicely now. If you guys have got any questions or comments, please uh, leave us a message in the, in the comment section and I'll uh, make sure to answer it. Thank you very much and have an awesome day.